So um, I hope that you've had the fortune to see some eclipses. They're always fun to observe. Um, and we can ask what phases of the moon produce the eclipses. We know that in an eclipse, one body is essentially blocking light from reaching another body. And so for a solar eclipse, the sun is the thing being eclipsed. And so that means that the moon needs to be between the earth and the sun. So therefore a solar eclipse only happens on the new moon. So it would happen somewhere close to observer's noon. So essentially what's happening during a solar eclipse is that the new moon in the sky, I've just colored it kind of bluish here because it's not reflecting light toward us. It happens to block the sun. So the moon is directly between the earth and the sun during the solar eclipse. And it therefore casts a shadow on the earth. And the eclipse path is what we call uh, the, the region on earth where that shadow moves as the earth rotates. So multiple observers on earth can see a solar eclipse when there is a total solar eclipse, but not all of them see the full total solar eclipse, even if at least one observer is seeing that. So how do we understand this? Well, if we look at the shadow, it doesn't touch everywhere and it's also not deepest everywhere. So there are places near the edge of the shadow which don't experience full darkness and places toward the center of the shadow do experience full darkness. And then the location of where that shadow is on earth is gonna change because the earth is kind of rotating underneath the shadow. So this is our 2017 eclipse viewed from space. Um, different parts of the shadow have special names. So the umbra is the darkest part of the shadow and the penumbra is the uh, lighter part of the shadow at the edges. So we can understand the geometry of a solar eclipse this way. Um, so this solar eclipse can only happen when Earth passes through the moon's shadow. And most of the time we actually don't get a solar eclipse. So we don't get a total solar eclipse during every single new moon. So why is that? Well, if the shadow of the moon misses Earth, then we won't get one. Why would the shadow of the Earth or shadow of the moon miss Earth? Because the moon's orbit is tilted. So first of all, Earth's axis is tilted and the moon orbits not quite exactly on our equator, but I think it's like a four degree tilt from the celestial equator. So most of the time the moon is not um, at new phase at just the right moment that it would produce a total solar eclipse. Um, these eclipses can be predicted well in advance and there's tables online and you can find um, maps of where the eclipse shadow will be in the upcoming eclipses. So if you missed the 2017 one, I think there's eclipses coming to North America again in, I wanna say 2024, but don't quote me. All right, so the lunar eclipse is the situation where the moon is the eclipsed body and it is eclipsed by the earth. So now the earth has to be between the sun and the moon. And so the phase that this eclipse, lunar eclipse would happen in would be the full phase. So the geometry now looks like this, where Earth's shadow is falling over the moon. And you have probably observed a lunar eclipse, even if you have not seen a total solar eclipse. So let me ask you, what color does the moon appear during the lunar eclipse? So I see most votes for three, which is correct. Um, the moon does look like a coppery red color during the lunar eclipse. Um, it's not totally invisible because there's still some sunlight that's striking the moon's surface. It just is filtered through Earth's atmosphere. So here's a picture of the lunar eclipse. If you haven't seen one, um, the, sh the um, penumbra you can see here is starting to take over the moon. So this is the rounded edge of Earth's shadow. And then when the moon is um, completely blocked in the, the deepest parts of that shadow, it's a, a dull coppery red color. So why red? Well, the atmosphere of the earth sticks out from you know, the solid surface of the earth. And as sunlight hits any sort of um, higher, what we call a higher optical density, 
So it's coming from space into air and air has a higher density for light. Um, it splits up the white sunlight. So white light contains all of the different colors and different colors bend by different amounts in a high optical density material like air. Um, the same thing happens in glass. So that's why a prism breaks up light into its color. So essentially Earth's atmosphere here is acting like a prism. Different amounts of light are bent by different amounts. Um, red light is bent the least and purple light is bent the most. And as the different colors of rays um, traverse through our atmosphere, most of the colors are bent so much that they don't make it through the atmosphere. And it is the red that actually makes it through successfully. And so therefore the red light from either side of the Earth's atmosphere is the only light that's hitting the moon. So because of that, we see the moon appearing reddish during the lunar eclipse for no reason other than the optics of light and color. All right. So hopefully, I don't remember when the next lunar eclipse is due to happen, but there are calendars online and I highly recommend viewing one if the viewing conditions are good. It's a lot of fun.